Cuphead is what I imagine when I imagine video games. It looks like a Hieronymus Boss painting penned by Ernie Bushmiller. It's got all the visual charm and flow of a old-timey Disney cartoon with the motion and ingenuity of a new-timey Disney cartoon. What interested me about my time playing Cuphead is that I didn't really enjoy the playing part of it. There were brief spikes of elation when I finally beat the baddie, but I didn't like the feel of it. It was a bit too sluggish and bouncy. Now, as an older man, with the interests of a much younger man, one of my favorite game series is Mega Man Zero, something that has a bit of Cuphead's DNA. I've beaten a lot of the Blue Bombers games aside, and I've spent a few hours slugging Metal and Metal Slug as well. And I've played a couple of shmups here and there, but I wouldn't say I'm very good at the genre. Although, looking at what constitutes being good at the genre, I'm not sure any human being is really good at the genre. At this point, I think that they just put out like tacit and runs on YouTube to make us feel bad. For me, Cuphead cemented how integrated video games are to 20-something friendships nowadays. All my buddies spent their childhood giving Tony Hawk concussions in his American wasteland, or brutalizing their bros in Melee, or upping their arsenal in Russian Clank. Alright, no, they didn't, they didn't play Melee, they played Brawl. My, my friends weren't that tuned into the gaming side guys as nine-year-olds. I was ostensibly a part of the Wii generation. Despite never having owned a Wii, I spent more time on it than on the Wii U, which I, I did own. Wiis littered every living room from London to Illinois. I didn't live in either of those places, but we have some Wiis here as well, don't you worry about that. I didn't find this game hard like my friends did. Despite growing up with Mario and the Spider-Man 2 PS2 game, they all found their way to Cuphead a decade later. This thing had intrigue steaming off of it like a power plant sized kettle. Or maybe just like a, a regular power plant as well, actually. Although I guess that might not be steam. I actually don't know how power plants work. How unfortunate that some dude couldn't make a jump one time with that tutorial though, huh? The repercussions of those 20 minutes echoed throughout the internet like a gunshot. Like a pie hitting the face of a games journalist shaped clown. As soon as that tutorial footage came out, the uh, internet was alight with uh, proverbial fire. And where there's fire, there's smoke, and it's smoke in, in this situation was a lot of video game writing about Cuphead. When we talk about Cuphead, we talk about difficulty. We talk about what a game is supposed to be. We talk about who it's supposed to appeal to and what that appeal is supposed to be. We also talk a lot about who's supposed to be allowed to cover all those questions, but I don't really know anything about that, so let's just skip that part. That's a heck of a lot of talking for what amounts to Mickey's Got a Gun. Imagine if we talk like that about Disney's Epic Mickey, something which on the offset has the same parts as Cuphead. Playing through Cuphead was a bit of a chore. I beat the game much faster than my amigos. That's the uh, entire point. I was elated getting through those bosses and sections faster than them. It was a trial in personal competency for me, a few years after the fact. I didn't tell them about this since I'm not that kind of weirdo and thank god I don't know about this channel, but it's something I kept in my heart. I, I beat the game really fast and that's kind of neat for me. It's useless of course because as I mentioned before, I've already put the R's in failing at games like this to have these skills now so that I don't have to fail as hard here. But at the same time, it feels kind of good to flex, right? The fact that Cuphead was a Discord generator is why I played it in the first place. Now, while I wasn't really enjoying dipping and ducking and diving in the fights because I didn't find the fights that engaging, I was enjoying the fact that there was a proverbial line in the sand, uh, kind of like a long jump, where each of my friends had spent some time at the exact same boss and some of them hadn't made it through. It wasn't like I was making a mark against them or anything or assuming who they were as people based on the fact that they couldn't get past the B boss or something like that, but just like you can enjoy a board game which is functionally snake and ladders to the average person, why can't you enjoy Cuphead that has a little bit more going on than Snakes and Ladders, I think? On one hand, I am glad that animation like this is being paid for, but for my friends who didn't get so far, I think watching a YouTube video might have been a bit more economic a use of time and money. Most of the friends who did get to the other end uh, didn't really enjoy the game that much either, and mostly, sort of, after playing it, never wanted to think about it ever again. I played and beat Cuphead because I wanted to show my two to my fellow dudes. I haven't told them about this, again but I've put a flag down in the sand as the best gamer, trademark, of the group having beaten it the fastest. I read a lot about Cuphead leading up to this sentence, just because it dominated discussions for a long time on games, especially in the year of its release. But at the end of the day, Cuphead doesn't have that much going on aside from playing tightly and being animated beautifully. Cuphead wanted to be a game and instead being made into the bench press. Now, I, I love me a good bench press, but I'm not going to really enjoy being underneath that weight, it's more about, you know, having the number at the end. 
I'm a damn fool for falling into that ploy, but it did make me feel like a rad dude, so hey, Cuphead's alright with me.